Hi everyone, I am Heather, and I want to welcome you to Magnificent Authors Podcast, brought to you by Magnificent Mamas. This is the show where we'll celebrate the magic of storytelling and the power of words. I'm your host, Heather, and each week I'll be sitting down with incredible authors from all walks of life to explore their creative journeys, uncover their writing secrets, and delve into the worlds they create. Whether you are an aspiring writer, a passionate reader, or simply curious about the minds behind your favorite books, this is the podcast for you. So grab a cozy blanket, pour yourself a cup of tea, and get ready to be inspired by the magnificent authors who join us. Let's dive in. Hi, everyone. I am Heather from Magnificent Mamas and Magnificent Authors Podcast. We're joined here today with author Patrick Allen. Patrick, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, folks. Hi, uh, thanks very much for having me on the show, Heather. Um, yes, um, as you were saying, my name is Patrick Allen. I am a resident of uh, Northern Ireland. I'm sure you can tell by the accent. It's pure Irish, probably very heavy, which is why I try to slow my accent down so people can understand <laughs> me better. Otherwise, what's he saying? Anyway, the book... The book itself, in fact, I started writing the book. It's 22 years this book has taken me mm-hmm. to get to this oh, point. Wow. Yeah, it's a long story, but we don't have that much time, so I'm just going to condense it. Basically, the story, um, it happened overnight whenever I was doing security. Bored, nothing else to do, so I thought, right, I'll do something. Wrote the first eight pages with the title, and then from then until now, it's been either forgotten about, it's been left to the side, or if I got an idea for something, then I would put it into the book itself. I never really took notes, and that's why it took so long. However, I think during that journey, I was also doing the editing process at the same time. So I was reading a bit, and I was going, I didn't like it, or I want to lengthen that bit, or et cetera. So when they say first drafts, to me, the whole thing was a first draft. So there was never first, second, or third drafts. Um, and the title itself... Don't ask me where the title came from. I haven't got a clue, but I'm sure yeah. during the interview I might think of where it came from. Was that okay for you? That's awesome. And I was actually going to ask you where you were from because I was listening to the accent. And um, it's my great great grandparents, I think it is, is from Ireland, like County Cork. <laughs> yeah, so. uh, yeah. That's down it's south, interesting. yeah. It is. Ireland we seem to be... Place... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Ireland is one place I would love to visit. The same. <laughs> it's nice. also... Um, it seems to be where everywhere. No matter what country you go to, oh, there's Irish, there's an Irish bar, there's Irish this, there's Irish that. Like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, you know? for sure. But you got to remember there was, you know, a lot of people that immigrated to, like, the U.S., for instance, yeah. that are Irish. So. Yeah, indeed. And Australia as well. Yeah. But, yes, I know what you're saying. Yeah, they immigrated probably to the best place. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not bad. But Ireland is beautiful from what I've seen. So I'd love to see it in person. Yeah, the scenery so, is the main thing. Yeah, definitely. I see it in pictures all the time. Like I follow stuff and it's just beautiful. But yeah. anyways, <laughs> um, do you, you have a favorite character in your book? Um, ooh, good question. Maybe, maybe the, the main detective himself, because he finds himself just in tricky situations and, seems to get out of it because he's just so calm and level headed and because of the the stuff that's going on, it kind of has a like sixth sense sort of thing about him. So I would say maybe the detective Stephen Wallace himself, the main character, but there is other characters because I think on last check on my book launch, I think there was about fourteen, maybe fifteen characters. But two or three of those were throwaways. So um, I didn't realize it was like a, an episode of Density, that many characters, but um, there you go. Yeah. That's crazy. 
if you could hang out with any character from your book and spend the day doing whatever you wanted, who would it be? If I could, sorry, what? Okay, if you could take any character from your book and hang out with them for the day, spend the day with them doing whatever you wanted, who would it be and what would you do? Oh, um, that's a good question. Damn. The, uh, again, I would probably go with Steven because there is wee bits and pieces of the character in, of me in the character because obviously you have to, you have to write a book from somewhere. So I think yeah. that the characters, they each have a wee piece of ourselves in each character. Um, his captain is a good character, and I would like to hang out with him because he's he's a music man. I'm a music man as well, so that's what they characters have a wee bit of ourselves. But yeah, definitely, I would go with Stephen. But then there's also <laughs> there's also the one of the, the researchers as well. He's quite a character, and that's the sort of thing that I'm into. So there's a few, but we'll go with the main the main character because he's he's the main character. Yeah, and we put a lot of ourselves into, I feel like, into the main characters more so than side characters, in my opinion. But I think I would probably choose the same thing if I was asked. Yeah. But whenever you read it, you'll find yourself in each character. Actually, in the book itself, each character, there is a background or a bio of some of the main characters. So you do get to see a wee bit about who they were before they became who they are. So that I sort of thought that that would be good to give readers an, an insight of who the person is. Yeah, definitely. I like that. A lot of people don't think about stuff like that. Yeah, you have to. If you want to make it real, you want them to the feel for the characters or understand them, you've got to tell them all of what's on the page, what else they were getting up to. Yeah. So what got you into writing? Ooh. Um... I think it's because I'm a creative sort of person because I do have a TV and theater background. Okay. So I do. So I thought that was maybe, and I've also, I've been writing since like off and on since 1980, 91. So mm -hmm. it's kind of just the two of them sort of go hand in hand with each other. No, I would have, I would have written comedy sketches for maybe what we called a performathon, which was like 24 hour performance for like children wow. in need. So I would have written wee small sketches and then it just sort of bits and pieces like out there. And it's it's probably always been in the system because as I say, I'm a creative person and I've been involved in first play was 1986. Yeah. So yeah, I've just always had a thing for it. But I've never really took it serious enough until this year to actually publish it. And this is your first book, correct? This is my first book, yes. I do have another collection online, but it's only a, a collection of poems and monologues. Mm -hmm. I don't think I need to push those because um, they actually, I think they're better, they're slightly better than the book in terms of a more personal approach to it. And if anybody was to read them, they would actually react or relate to one of the pieces in it because they were written on the time, it depends on what I was feeling on the day, I wrote my words yeah. down. So I was able to sort of express my emotions into words. And I think that's what makes it more relatable to people. And that's what people are looking for, stuff that they can relate to in books, in poetry, in life in general. Yeah. So they don't feel so alone. Yeah. And those poems will definitely take you there and they will accompany you on your journey. And so will the book Shamala because it's been given high reviews and people are relating to things that got in the book. What would you say the hardest part of writing the book was? <laughs> the advertising and the marketing. Oh, yeah? How yeah. come? I find that so difficult to do. I, I can I can advertise and market it okay, but it's just that we are small fish in a huge ocean. And the fact that I've yeah. never done anything like that before, I am trying to get my foot in the door. I actually find physical sales and physical awareness is better than actual Facebook ads or Amazon ads. Huh. 
but I thought the whole the book process I thought was easy enough to write. All right, yes, it took 22 years, but that's because of the reasons. But at the minute, I'm finding advertising marketing. However, when it comes to my second book, when it comes out, hopefully in April, I will have actually learned what I took from the first one and pushed it into the second, which means it's learning experience, yes. Yeah. But in order to learn from it, it means that in future times, it won't be as stressful and it won't be as hard to get used to. So it's a learning curve, but I found marketing was probably the hardest part. Yeah. I don't know. I I love promoting and marketing on Facebook and social media in general. And it's awesome to be able to know you're helping authors, especially, you know, authors that are not as well known as the big names and who want to and who are amazing writers. Yeah. So it's awesome to be able to help. Well, I think my book could be, it, it fits in between Stephen King and Dean Koontz. It's right in that mm -hmm. bracket. And nice. if they, if they, if they, yeah, if people want to say, yeah, yeah, you're just talking about it, right? Get both those offers to read my book, and I can guarantee they'll be the same. Well, it sounds like something right up my alley for sure, because those two authors are some of my favorites. Yeah. And you can't have so, just one favorite author. Yeah, no, you can't. You can't. But it was written from that point of view of, Stephen King with a sort of horror, but with a twist, and then Dean Coons mm -hmm. with a wee bit more sort of detail. So that's the way I sort of was coming between the two of them. Yeah. They're really good authors, and I think, you know, we can learn a lot from authors such as them, or even the classics like Shakespeare, Homer, you know, whatnot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, without the, the writers today, it's because of Shakespeare. Yep. And everyone, it seems like since COVID, everyone wants to become a writer. Yep. There's been a ton since COVID. So, I don't know. Uh, there's going to be a um, lot more in the next five years because of AI. Yeah. And, and that's making hope, a lot of people mad. Yeah, it is. And I hope Amazon actually take the, the right avenue and go... Book written by AI, it's not being published because it's not their book, it's not their work, and they're just an easy way out. Yeah, it's true. It's true, it's true. Okay, so you like Dean Coons and Stephen King. Yes. Are they your favorite authors, or do you have another favorite? Um, I like James Patterson as well. Okay. He's good. Uh, yes, I like him for his uh, thrillers, his uh, character of Cross. He's very good. Mm -hmm. But then I'm also a fan of G.S. Patterson. Not G.S. Patterson, sorry. Uh, Grisham, John Grisham. Okay. It's been <laughs> a while his, since I've read any of his work. Yeah, it was the same. But I do like um, court cases and sort of stuff like that there. And one of the top movies of all time, in my opinion, in courts is 12 Angry Men. Yeah. It's similar to sort of his books. What's your favorite genre to read? Cheaper so. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe thrillers. I do like I'm a bit of a fan of sci fi as well. I mean I have, I have an interest in UFOs and all that sort of mm -hmm. esoteric stuff and things like that there. So I've a lot of genres, but I would like the sort of thrillers are good. But sometimes they all drama that again, but mainly thrillers like as to say, um James Patterson, um and you've got all them, Grishnam, and then Stephen King has a few thrillers, but they're mainly sort of horror thrillers as books. Yeah. Okay, here's a question for you. If you had to write in another genre that you've never written in, what genre would it be and why? Uh Probably sci-fi. Simply because, as I said there a couple of seconds ago, I have an interest in all things UFOs and esoteric stuff I got there. I've had an interest in it since maybe very early 90s. So I have a lot of material I can actually pull from and make a book out of it. That's I've never awesome. written uh, sci-fi. Do you plan to give it a shot one day? Yeah. And that is possibly maybe 
I'm tiring of that idea of maybe the third book. Um, a reason why I don't want them to try a different genre, which means then I'm not pigeonholed. I mean, then the people would sort of go, yeah. oh, he does a different book from different genres. Because the first one is paranormal thriller. The second one, which I'm currently writing, is a um, serial killer, but with a twist. Uh, nice. And then the third one might possibly be a sci-fi, maybe. I haven't got that yet, but yeah, that would be, it's on the to-do list if I do decide. That sounds really good. Okay, so what genres do you not like to read? Pol political stuff. Um, <laughs> historic. Political stuff and historical stuff. Stuff I got there, just and, and, and stuff to do with accountancy. That's just, yeah. Uh, I, I, I just fall asleep. <laughs> I understand completely. I'm going to pause for just a second. Give me just a second. I'll be right back. Um, and we'll edit this out later. Give me two seconds. I'm back. Oh, hello. Ah, yes. You always have to have a drink. I know when I'm talking oh, so yes. much, I always need a drink. Um, yeah. Okay. So, when did you know you wanted to write? Um, are we still recording? We are. Um, yeah. Oh, I don't actually know. Um, it might have actually been during the excuse me the time I did a performing arts course. Mm -hmm. We were doing sketches and stuff like out there, and we were sort of reading through scripts, and then. Part of the courses was probably to come up with an idea for a scene or something out there. So that was kind of around the time where I thought, oh, maybe this might sort of go somewhere. And that was 1981. Mm -hmm. so, it, uh, so I think it was around then. So about 30 or so years. Yeah, at least. That's awesome. Yep. If you could go anywhere and read any book, what would where would you go? If I could go anywhere mm -hmm. and read any book, do you mean anywhere in time or anywhere on the planet? Yeah, anywhere in time. Anywhere in time? Um, <laughs> probably go back to Shakespeare's time and watch him writing one of his any of his plays. And just see how, how he. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was interrupting. I was just going to say, I wonder how different his work would have been from what he was writing to what we know of his work now. If there would have been any differences or anything like that. That's a good point, actually, because obviously things are interpreted slightly different. But I don't think it would have been much because most of his stuff seems to follow the same kind of language. Yeah. Like the ye old English, you know, so I think it would have been all right. But it, I would just like to have been there in the process of seeing how he would have wrote. Like, you know, did he get up for breaks? Did he sit and look out of a window? Did he let up a cigarette? You know, something out there. You know, <laughs> his sort of um, in between his um, creative moments. Same as Stephen oh, King. Yeah, I, would like to, I would like to be a fly on the wall of one of his books as well. Um, but to read, to what the book to read? Um, geez, that's an interesting one. Um, I don't know. I think that's the first time I've asked that question. Yeah. To read a book? I don't know. I'll come back to you on that one. Remind me at, at the end. I'll, I'll probably be able to answer that one. Okay. Um, um, is my favorite word today, apparently. Hold on. I was just thinking of something, and like I told you earlier, I don't like to do scripts. So it's usually like fly by the seat in my pants. Um, so what type of writer are you? Would you say you're a planner or a pantser? A lot of people um, say... The first one would have been pantser. The first one would have been... As I approached it, I more or less let it write itself. 
Mm-hmm. So the second one, I'm doing it, kind of planning it, but kind of in between the two. Um, what I'm doing on the second one is I'm, I'm establishing the scenes first. Mm-hmm. Then once I establish the scenes, then I'll flesh them out. And then I'll put in the fillers, and then hopefully by then it'll either be first draft done, or I'll end up doing what I did the last one and edit as I go. So that's what I'm kind of doing on the second one. But for the first one, um, Shamal and the Belonging, it was Panzer. It was as I went. That's awesome. I know me, like when I'm writing, I could never do planning it all out like that. That's just not me. I've had a character that, you know, was going to be the bad person in the story, like the villain. And during the writing, became a good guy. It was crazy. Yeah, I usually let it do itself. You let it run itself because if you try to force it, um, it won't happen. Yeah, definitely. So that's do you write? As... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say ahead, that's please. the same as my that's the same as my poems. They're all first draft. As in, as soon as I came, they come into my head, I wrote them straight down. I did not go back to them again because if it did, you would have um, lost the the essence of them. Yeah. It when you're writing, do you write at home or do you go somewhere to write? Um if I'm at work, I'll notes I'll put them on notes. Mm-hmm. I'll just put them the things on notes, but if I am doing any any outside of that, I'll, I'll write at home. <coughs> Excuse me, and I'll use Word. You'll use Word? Yeah, I use Word on this one, but on the first one, I used uh, Google Docs. I love Google Docs. It's perfect for me. Yeah, I used it, um, but I thought, oh my goodness, there's a complete difference between that and Word. Because what I've done in Word is I've actually formatted it in exactly the way it should be on a manuscript, which means I'm getting the okay. margins, I'm getting the pages. So I've been saying, I'll know then when I get them in 200 pages or whatever, I know exactly the right format, which means uh, there's not uh, there's not much format to be done in that regard. Yeah, I thought you could do that on Google Docs too. You, you probably can, but it's it was a learning experience for me. It was only until I learned how to format the book, uh, my, this one, Shamala on Word, to upload mm-hmm. it to Kindle. Then I realized, oh, right, okay, so it has to be set that way. So the way I was working with Google Docs was, was just full pages. I just write away. So that's yeah. probably why. Because the original manuscript is only like 113 pages. But once it's formatted to book size, it becomes so probably 200 and something. Jeez, that's wild to think about. Yeah. I know. Have you ever participated in any challenges or anything like that for writing? Um, I've sent off a couple of, excuse me, I've sent off a poem, uh, maybe two, two competitions or whatever, but I haven't heard back or I've never heard back. So they're lost. Yes, definitely. What would you, what kind of advice would you give to an aspiring author or a new author? Um, yourself. I would say if you have an idea, if you get an idea into your head, write it down because normally the first idea you get could be the best one. So if you try to then not write it down and you try to think of what it was, it might not be the initial thought. As soon as you get the thought, write it down. And also just let the story don't don't force the writing. If you force it, you'll end up getting annoyed with it and you'll end up walking away from it and saying this is no good. Feel 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 the story. Feed the writing. If you want to do two pages, do two pages. If you want to do a page, do a page. Don't let that dictate you. If you feel you can't do any more that day, just leave it. Come back to it later. It's always going to be there. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think you can't push yourself like that at the same time. I did the Nano Remo, however you say it, challenge last year, and I never completed it. And this year I did. I finished the 50,000 words in a month. And wow. then I was trying to figure out which direction to end my story. There was a shorter way or a longer way. And it's going with the longer way. But I was really proud of myself for 
pushing myself to take the time each day to write because normally I would be like, okay, I can do it tomorrow or I can write extra later. That's exactly what I am at the minute. If I, if I actually dedicate time to doing it, I'll actually get something done. Do you typically because dedicate my, time to do it or no? Um, if I do, if I do dedicate time, like if I say, right, I'm going to spend the next three, four hours, I'm just going to write this and do something. It doesn't matter how much I've written, as long as I've done something, because if I don't, I'll go for, I'll write something the next when I come off here, and maybe I won't go back to it again the next week. And so whenever yeah. I say I dedicate time to it, I'm just going to say, right, just force, not forcing myself, but just sort of putting time aside per day, then you sit down and go, right, yeah. doesn't matter if it's a page, doesn't matter if it's two pages, just get something down. I just don't, I'm not in the think, routine. I think, you know, taking the time, like you said, and just anything, whether it's a paragraph or a line, I mean, that helps. It does, not, because it means you know, that it, can be, it can direct, yeah, it can direct your flow of the, the story, because on the new one, I'm scrubbing the first eight pages. Yeah. Already, I'm not even halfway through it, but I know exactly the way it's going on those first eight pages. It's completely no, different. They, book. No, that's. I mean, it happens. Yeah, I've had you know characters that I've changed their name three times because the name doesn't fit. <laughs> I've never changed a character's name. Um, however, I've kept the title of the book from the very first time I started writing. It's never changed. Don't 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 ask me what it means. I don't have a clue. Yeah. I have, uh, I put like a generic name, kind of what the story is about, or like the main character. And then when I come up with a good name, then I change the name on my doc. So, yeah, that's what I have with my second book. It's actually based here in Northern Ireland and it's called Murder on the Boards, the Board Mountains. It's called that, but it might not end up being that. So it's just like a working title. Yeah, definitely. I can understand that. I do the same. Um, is there anything else you want to share about writing, about your books, about anything in general to anybody um, listening? I Yeah, um, if people are interested, they can get me, you can either get me up on Amazon or if it's easier for them, just to go to my webpage. Uh, the book is on there. Also, information about uh, how to sign up to my subscriber list. Stuff I got there, and you'll get me under patrickfrancisallen.com. Okay. I know we will share your links to your socials to buy your book and whatnot um, on the day this podcast airs. So hopefully, everyone goes and checks out your book and yes. gets a nice thorough lot of reading it. Indeed. Thank you very much for having me on today, Heather. You're welcome, and it's been a pleasure. You're welcome back anytime. Absolutely fantastic. Hopefully, I'll be a joint interview with myself and Mr. King. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that would be nice, All although right. he wouldn't be able to. All right, thanks very much. Yeah, you're welcome. It's been a pleasure. And you. And that's a wrap on another episode of Magnificent Authors Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure to share another inspiring conversation with a talented author. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to Magnificent Authors Podcast so you don't miss any of our upcoming conversations with amazing writers. And be sure to check out Magnificent Mamas on our website, which is www.magnificentmamas.us or on our Facebook page for more inspiring content from incredible authors. I'd love to hear your thoughts on today's episode. What resonated with you the most? Head over to Facebook or leave a comment on our website and let me know. Until next time, keep reading, keep writing, and keep those imaginations soaring. <laughs>